Hello and welcome to Buckle Up. And today we're in the internet's favourite weird car. <laughs> the Fiat Multipla. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Unusually, we're going to start this video with a quick history lesson mm. about Fiat. Do you want to start at the beginning? At the beginning, way, Genesis. way back in the 60s, yeah. there was a car called the 600 mm -hmm. Multipla. Yeah. And it was a very popular car and you could fit, I think, six people in it. Yeah. But it was only a little bit bigger than the 500 and it looked like a van from the future as imagined in the 1950s. And it was excellent and many people had one. Yeah. And then in the 90s, a new designer joined Fiat. His name's on screen now. <laughs> and basically he was like, I love that kind of thing. I want to do that. But for now, for the future, which was the 90s at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and he started making these really wacky concept cars with like concave back ends and like three abreast seating and all this crazy stuff. And everyone's like, oh, Fiat, you're so crazy. But they never thought they were going to make one. No. And then one year at a motor show, they brought out this, the Fit Multipler. And it wasn't a wacky concept car. It was a production car. Yeah, everyone thought it was a concept car. Yeah. And they were like, no, no, we, we will make it. Yeah, we're going to make this one. <laughs> you can, you um, can buy one. Basically, Fiat went, we want to make a compact MPV like the Renault Scenic, which was very popular, probably the most popular one at the time. Mm. Yeah. We want a rival to that, but we think that's too big. So we're going to make it, we're going to aim for it to be less than four meters long. And we're going to make sure that you can fit more than five people in it. Because a lot of those cars actually only had five seats. Mm. Yeah. Which yeah. they achieved by making it 15 centimeters wider than a normal car. But they kept it super short and they put in three abreast seating in the front and the back and then a big high roof, and you're left with this. Yeah. What yeah. we're in now. A bubble. A bubble. But I think we should talk about the rest of the design while we actually go around the car. Yes. Yeah. So, let's do that. So let's do that, because there's some contentious styling going on at the front. Yes. <laughs> okay, so as you may have noticed, this little baby here is the facelifted model. 2004, Fiat became cowards and got rid of the two-tiered double bubble Horse thing. growth. Yeah, the growth that they had there here. Was, yeah, so you had a sort of low flat bonnet. Yeah. Yep. And then a growth here that yeah. went up into the windscreen line. Yeah. And down here you had your low beams and then you had literal high beams up here. Literal high beams. Yes, they were, they're high up. They were, yeah. And also you had fog lights down here, which they've gone as well. Yeah. So you had six, six lights on the front. So you really see it coming. Um, which is probably not something you wanted to happen. Yeah, then you'd be blinded by yeah. the styling. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they obviously, in 2004, they went, you know what? The multiple's not selling. I know what will help. We'll make it look like the new Fiat Bravo. The Fiat Bravo, notable for basically no one buying one. Yeah. So obviously it didn't help this either. What it does look like at the front is a bus, it basically. Is, it, it's very glass heavy. Well, it's made it very vanny. Yeah, because yeah. this this is just there's no styling here now, really. There's on look, the there's bonnet, this certainly. Filled in section of the grill, and then it's open. That's that's for aero, that is. And then yes, aero. And then there's more of a grill down here, and these are very van-like. Shall we go down the side and look at the more vanity bits of yeah, it? Yeah, there's something interesting about the side actually. Yeah. So let's let's go look at that. Let's now. do that. I'll come round to you. So the first thing you really notice here is just how short this whole car is. It's like you. Yeah. While we're talking about interesting features, I want to talk about these protectors on the doors, which are built in to the actual door handles. So, so if you have children, cl clumsy children, and they go with the door, and into a wall. It, it won't damage the door. This allegedly. will hit for allegedly. We're not yeah. going to test it because this is not our car. Yeah. And we're in a field, so we don't really have a wall. We've got your car. We can, yeah. We can. No, 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 no. No. Right. So while the car is incredibly short, the effect 
almost it's like they've taken a normal car and just squished it in because it's really grown and that means you have a tremendously large glass house yes. which really means visibility from the inside is fantastic it's completely like a van you know you've got so much height i wish i had a tape measure on me but it looks like almost half the height yeah. of the vehicle from the ground is window but that means from the base of the body more than half of the car is glass yeah and it also means you've got such a low window line here that even if you've got an child in the back you've got really good visibility above the bodywork also down here below the belt line is the trim level eleganza eleganza you have to say it with your hands yeah eleganza so that's the top trim level yes. look at this car this is yes. look at the majesty of the Alloy wheels. Alloy, Seven, the, 16? The 15 inch alloy oh, wheels. Wow. Oh, nice. On the top trip, 15 inch alloy wheels on the top trip model. And the sparkly silver metallic paint. Ooh. I do quite like the paintwork. Well, just you then. Yeah. Um, can I draw your attention, gentlemen, to this fantastic fuel filler flap? Yes. Which you push in like that. Wow. You don't like press it and it pops, you just do it yourself. So you trap your fingers in there? Yeah, you do trap your fingers. And it whacks your wrist it on does, the inside as well when it pops every open. time you open it. That's sort of all there is to talk about yeah, on and, the side. And while this is obviously the facelift, we mentioned well, from there... From there. The, <laughs> this is basically the it same. It seems like they've literally gone, let's put the front end from a Bravo on, and we're done. Yeah, that's it. Jobs are good and we'll time. move on. <laughs> right, should we have a look at the back? Ooh, right, that's, that's, that's quite hollow, that's, that. That is, that's a tinny roof. But this didn't change for the facelift. Jasper, you're actually going yeah, to that's, move that's... aside slightly so everyone can see the majesty of the very slight uh, buttock. 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 This is like a precursor buttock. to basically everything Renault spent the, the mid-2000s doing. Yes. But this was first. Yes. This is also influenced by the concept cars that came out before this they also had this kind of styling they're generally more exaggerated the only interesting different thing going on here is this um but then everything uh, else i was is... going to say that the the actual rear windows do slightly curve around to the back of the car because yeah. the, oh, the final pillar is in inboard yeah it's a, it is a one smooth corner around so here your d pillar very... does sit further in your blind spots are minimal basically yes which is good if you have... It was intelligent family. design. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of intelligent design, let me... F look, there's a little dent here to help me find it. Um, <laughs> I just want you to notice this. There's a pig. There's a pig. That's this car's nickname. Just this car specifically, not a general modern <laughs> nickname. Um, Whoa, look at that boot. I'm look gonna, at the I'm size gonna, of that boot. I'm sitting in it. This boot is larger than an equivalent aged uh, Renault Scenic. Yes. Which... Uh, in terms of footprint, was a significantly bigger car, and it, it only had much five longer seats. Car. Is this what? How how long is this again? Four. Meters? This is just over four meters. They didn't quite hit there. They wanted it to be under four meters. Mm. Uh, this is four meters, eighty-eight millimeters. The really good thing about this, actually, you've got an incredibly low boot floor, haven't you? So it's going to be easy to load stuff in. Well, yeah. Jasper, I think also you're missing one of the major benefits of the shape of the tailgate, which is by having this concave section you're left with enough headroom under the tailgate for a normal sized human being. I mean, I can stand under most tailgates, but yes, even Rob even I can, can stand, stand under it. So you can stand just, here, shelter from the rain. Just. Um, go bird watching. Yep. I don't know what people do with open tailgates. And also from here, you can see the sort of modular nature of all the seats. So yes. this car has effectively six identical seats. Now there are slightly different backs, but these are interchangeable panels. Yeah. And by having six interchangeable seats, you're left with a lot of flexibility in the interior, yeah. which we could talk about now. And we're in it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> from inside. Oh, thank you, chauffeur. Oh, yes. Look at this. Three proper seats, full size full seats. Full size seat. And look, a flat floor. Yes. Because Fiat used an ingenious space frame they did. chassis in the monocoque. Yeah. So this is incredibly rigid, but you don't need structural stuff with the floor. No. Because it's all around you. Yeah. They actually made a six-door version of this for the... They did. ...Turin Winter Olympics. They did, I've seen and that. And they didn't have to put in any additional body strengthening, even no. though they added another suicide door behind this door. Yes. That is very impressive. Yeah. Another thing to mention, while the floor is completely flat, is 
these rear seats can be configured and put in several different positions as well, can't yes. they? Yes, you can move them forwards and backwards. And so actually, at the moment, my centre seat is further back one notch that. further back than the two outer seats. Yes. I'm not sure you can slide them back No, no. No, you can't. You, you, you have to literally them. pick them you and move them. Mo yes. Where's that button? For you, it's on the right-hand side of your chair down here. Oh, I've got it. There we go. Oh, oh my God. It? Yeah. Yeah, yours is on here. Right. Oh. There we go. Ah. Oh, yours goes back further. F*** you. So middle, middle seat belt. Oh, yeah, it's one of those. One of those. Which is very odd considering the setup of the seat belt for the middle seat in the front. Is this to plug it into when it's not in use? Yes. But I, ju I just find that odd because on the front seat. Yeah, they've engineered they, the seat belt in. So why couldn't the they do. Oh, hello. That is quite satisfying. Th that actually is very similar design to the fuel flap. Look at these door handles. Yes, these are a thing of majesty. They actually mm. rise up above where the glass is, which is. Yes. Impressive. Well, and, speaking of the glass, oh god, is the ignition on? Uh, no. Can you slot the key in, please? Get this. Get <laughs> this. Hello, viewers. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. So yes, speaking of the rear windows, yes. If you try and roll them down, yes, they're so massive they go to there. Yes, that's not brilliant, is it? Because yeah, they're at the bottom of the door yeah. now. In a way, that is quite good, though, because it stops a small child from physically being able to stick their head well, out of the window. I think they could fall out of it if the windows went all the way That down. is a good point. What well, can I just say, while we're talking about these features here, um, I want to mention the fact there's an ashtray in the back so that your kids uh, can smoke. Two ashtrays. Oh, sorry, sorry. It wouldn't be an Italian car from the late 90s if it didn't have ashtrays in the back for your kids, would it, really? No. I think also it's important in having spoken about those. Mm. You do also you don't get any fixed cup holders, but you do get this lovely picnic table you do. formed by the back of the front yes. middle seat. You also get one of them in this middle seat. Yeah. If you've got four people in the car, you can have a lovely picnic somewhere you can. as a family. Why don't we do that later? Let's well let's go and do it now. Right. What's for lunch, Harry? Picnic time. Picnic. I've got a lovely hamper full, full of stuff. Yeah. Some of it's themed. Italian, uh, mozzarella, tomato, uh, basil and pesto. That is super Italian. That's for you. Uh, I've got uh, some salad. I've got some mozzarella, some basil by itself. <laughs> if anyone's even more hungry, I've got a pizza. I think you could probably eat it cold. Great results cook. But it doesn't say you can't eat it cold, so it's probably fine. Because you're a picky eater, Rob. I've got bacon, chicken and bacon, or... Too many flavours Egg and bacon. Egg and bacon, please. That's the one you want, okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's not very Italian. And then I've got some lovely San Pelli. Oh! Ah. Now, I am excited about that, because I love <laughs> a San, San Pelli for you. Thank you. I've got some San Pelli for you. Thank you. You don't drink it, no. do you? Look! You can have it there. The cup holders. And then I'll pop big. mine in here. Look, there we've got the cup holders. That's genius. So have you ever been to Italy? I've been you? to Italy several times. Have you been? I have. I've also been to Italy. Now, some people may say, we're just doing this on camera so we can claim the VAT back on all of this food, but I don't think that's true. We're not that registered. Right, yeah, here we go. For your full picnic. Oh. Oh, dude, oh thank you so much. That's so much better. Oh, yeah, okay. I need a knife and fork for my sandwich. Well, do you want a knife and a fork in one? Absolutely, I do. Oh, some napkins. Yeah, thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry it's nice Christmas. having a production this team is for once. going this is up it. near Christmas. Oh, well, good. Can this be the Christmas special? No. Or I could play the spoons. You could play the spoons. I love that song. What's the point of this? How's your Italian wrap? Oh, yeah. It's good. The basil's nice. As is the Would mozzarella. you like some more? Oh, wow.
Okay, that was a lovely picnic. That was it delicious. Was. But we're back here in the field by the power of movie magic, and I think now the thing to do would be to go and sit in the front. I'm going that way. <laughs> Hello, viewers. Okay, so now we're in the front. Yes. The, the party piece. The pinnacle. This is why I wanted to sit in the middle, so I had maximum access. You can straddle the centre console. To, to, to Mount Coolmore. <laughs> um, this, this is... I think that this is the stupidest, most bonkers bit of the interior to yes. me. This is all of the directional air vents in the car. Uh, apart from this apart one. from these ones. This is a significant proportion of all the directional air vents in the car. Yes, so I agree. You, there are two out here where you would find them in a conventional car, and then you have this robot face. I robot, and it's got three different sections. I can make it can look like from... Russell Howard. <laughs> oh, God. It's got three different sections, all of which you can configure the airflow for. So in effect, you've got an airflow direction for each of the three passengers well, in the front. That's yeah. the theory. Yes. And then this is also an air vent yes. up here. Between Mr. King's legs, there is another ash another, ash another ash and cigarette for, lighter. For your fourth middle child. Yeah, who's uh, sat in the middle in the front. Yeah. This is everything. So, so this was like another design solution yeah. by Fiat, is if you have this kind of central dashboard element, then it's very easy to change the car from left-hand to right-hand drive. Yes. This is just the middle section of the dashboards. Everything's wired to here, and you just swap the wires over, and you have a right-hand drive version of this and a left-hand drive version of this. Yes. And then that also means, like, you don't get a conventional glove box. You've got a shelf down here, and then you've got two dash top glove boxes yes. with different handles. Yeah. I don't know why. And they're of a decent size. Yeah, this you one. Can, you can fit in. Army knife. They're not massively deep. Well, that's a knife. That's big. I'm a bit nervous. Can you put that away, please? Yes. This is really interesting packaging as well, isn't it? Because obviously you've got a third passenger in the centre. I don't mm. feel so cramped. You don't have a centre console, so your gear stick is on the With dashboard. The yes. Look how close the gear shift yes. is it's to the steering wheel. It's yeah. for very, sporty driving. Very sport. Well, it is an Italian car at yeah. heart. Because you don't have a centre console, guess where the handbrake is for the driver? I know where it is because I nearly sat on it when I got in. It's, it, well, it's like a fly-off handbrake in a Jaguar. Yes. Mm. Except nowhere near as stylish. No. And it doesn't actually fly off. No. Mm. Um, it's just there. To trip you up as you get in and out of the car. My hand struggles to fit around that gear lever, uh, gear lever handbrake. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, no, but he brushes up against the door. I can't, I can't door. reach from here. Can I talk about this? The speedo obviously goes up in increments of like 10, 20, whatever, as does the rev counter. So it's not immediately obvious when you look at it, which is the speedo and which is the rev, revs. The, the, it, like it, they could have picked different numbers to differentiate. What it, you're saying is most cars on the rev counter usually have a multiplier of a thousand yes, as opposed to a hundred. Yes. yes. So your rev count is going 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, yeah. et cetera, as is your speedo. Yes. yes. One other thing that Fiat have done is they've made the controls really easy and accessible to use, haven't they? Because have all they? the buttons here... Have they? They're not really laid out sensibly, yeah. though. No, but... All, well, no. Name another car where you'll find your fog lights directly next to your hazards and your rear heated windscreen. And your lockout for the rear windows. And then, yeah, the child lock for the rear windows. And they're the five big buttons on the dashboard. Like, these are the important ones. Yeah. Right. But if you, want to adjust, if you want to adjust your mirrors, Jasper, it's in the uh, it's yeah, above you. you. They're, it, they're here. Yes. Well, maybe I should rephrase my original statement. The controls that Fit have chosen to place on the dashboard are all very large and easy to use. Yes. What are the door but pockets it... like? They're there. They're and... not. They're not actually very big. Anyway, shall we drive it? Because I think yes. it'll be fun. I think Jasper should drive first. Okay, Jasper can drive first. Okay. I love my pig. I heart my pig. That took a considerable amount of time. Yes, it's quite a wide car. And I've got little legs. Oh God, that clutch feels awful. <laughs> Oh, 
Hello viewers, we are now driving the Fiat Multipla with its five-speed gearbox, dash-mounted shifter and 1.9 litre diesel engine producing a number of horsepower. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, you're going straight into the figures like we're not all three sitting in the front of a car <laughs> hurtling down the road under your control, which we, is already a nightmare. We have mentioned the three abreast seating before. This is a whole different experience. It is odd. It's very odd. I must say that I wish you were just a little bit further that way because I keep brushing your arm every time I go for the gear lever. Ah, that's that better? much better, that's much better, thank you. It drives quite nicely. Doesn't it's not it? it's not too loud. It's, it's, there's quite a lot of wind noise. I'm slightly yes. conscious that there's corners coming up. Yeah. <laughs> well on the outer seat. Yeah. I feel like Don't oh, do that. Don't out. do that. Please don't Jasper, Jasper, Jasper please don't do that. <laughs> the outer seat is <laughs> relatively comfortable. This is a wide car, isn't it? Yeah. You don't really realise it until you're driving along a country lane. So, oh my god. The footprint of this car is not drastically different from the i20N we've got on test this week. Uh, no. Which actually, we could show you these cars, the Visuals. cars side by side. Yeah. But obviously this is much taller, but... Yes, well, yeah. And it's, yeah, slightly shorter and slightly wider, bizarrely. Mm. See that rev matching? No. I feel like we're going very quickly. We're doing 55. Else? We're doing 20. Yeah. <laughs> on the revs, yeah, 20 miles an hour. My arm is getting tired from holding on for dear life. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. This would be a great family car, wouldn't it? For a family with three adults. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've only got two. What do we think of the comfort? I think I'm not comfortable. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually That's what that I was thinking. So it's 120 horsepower. 210 newton meters. Okay. It's not too bad. Not, Although my not amazing for a turbo petrol Corsa had the same. It's not great for a diesel engine. It started its life as an Isuzu diesel engine yeah. that was then taken into the whole of the GM group and then it was shared with the Fiat group. Right. So it became the engine for this and also a version of it became the diesel engines in Alphas. I feel ill. Yeah, I do. Do you? Yeah, from your driving, not yeah. from my cold. Go on, give it, give it some out of here. Whoa. Forty. It doesn't actually have a red line, does it? Oh well, I think we should find it. <laughs> no. No, 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 no! I wouldn't have done that. I think that, that is that, it. That, that is it. Five. Four thousand nine hundred. <laughs> That's low yeah. for a diesel. I reckon they've used the exact same rev counter as they would have on the petrol models, haven't they? Uh, yeah, because it goes yeah. to 7,000 yep. RPM, yeah. which is a bit unnecessary yep. when the red light's below five. <laughs> it's, it's well enough geared and it's easy enough to drive the shift smoothly when third goes in. Uh, the, so is it, was it going down into third, wasn't it? It was going from fifth to third, it oh, didn't. Well, oh, well, that's because you're being a moron. Shifting. I'm block shifting. No, short shifting. Oh, you, you, I suppose you can only short shift, can't you? There we go. There's yeah. fifth. So, yeah, gearbox is not the strongest point of this driving experience. Neither is the clutch. It's incredibly heavy, but actually the engagement's okay. Is it, I think, something to do with it being from a pickup truck? Quite possibly. It's quite firmly sprung. You can feel the imperfections in the road. There's a lot of them. The steering, actually, is surprisingly okay, I think. Surprisingly okay is like a non-sentence. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not like a van. It's not as bad as you might expect no. looking at the outside of the car. No. I think the gearing's quite good. The gearbox, however, is that, well, the action on it is... Is it, is it ratioed for hilly Italian roads? The, Probably. I don't know. The ratios seem pretty... Well, not... Were well, you saying the fifth is long enough for motorway? Yeah, because at 60, it was only doing 2,000 RPM, which is higher than you'd like in a diesel, I think. But given it doesn't actually have that much torque, you probably need it to be a bit shorter than longer. Yeah, especially if we had six people in here. Yeah, plus some luggage. 
because it is a surprisingly big boot considering the size of the car yeah. and the way it's the interior is laid out that when you open the boot it's surprisingly big but it's still not six persons luggage worth of space yeah. so how does it feel on the limit on the limit yeah. no, 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 we've no, not no, found no, the no, limit no, no, have no. we no we're not going to either i need to carry no, speed no you don't need to carry no jasper slow down don't need to carry speed at all these are proper corners exactly i need to carry speed no it's that, it's that. be careful no. there's a corner on the no. genuinely no, jasper no, no, slow no, down no, it's, it's, no, 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 no actually no, no. slow down oh that was <laughs> fine <laughs> Not in this, it's I nearly, not. I nearly grabbed Rob's unmentionables in my panic. <laughs> Why are you driving it like you are? I don't know. Italian. Understand. <laughs> I'm just holding on to the sun visor. You know what? No, For something that's I don't. so weirdly proportioned, such an odd shape and odd design, I'm having quite a lot of fun here. Yeah, we're not. We're probably going to swap drivers over now. So we're just going to find somewhere to pull over and then I'll uh, I'll I'll hop in the driver's. We'll all move <coughs> one place to the right and Jasper can go round. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm never ever driving in a car with you again. <laughs> that doesn't feel right. The handbrake is on the other side. Yep. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, Samuel said it doesn't like seconds. Oh, or third. Or any gear. I think the problem is my boots are too big. Yeah. And I'm standing on the actual... I think the other thing as well, Harry, is you're too used to driving cars with decent gearboxes. I learned to drive in a Citroen. Speedo's in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah, the Speedo should be closest to you. Oh, oh. there's a real Ferrari. And another one. And another one. Uh, and another one. Uh, and another one. And another shit. one. And another one. And another one. What just happened? <laughs> This is like, here are all the amazing cars Italy has produced, yeah. and we're in a multiplier. Yeah. <laughs> That's so stupid. I can and oh. there's, there's a, a 308, a California, oh, 488, a California, oh. a 458, a California. I feel like what's happening here is there's so many amazing Ferraris going past. A 458 Speciale, 488 GTB. That I am not actually saying how it is to drive. Steering's too light, the clutch is awful. Brakes, they're okay. Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fourth. Round the blind bed. Yeah. So this is the forest road. In my mind, this is a special rally stage. What the hell's that? What is that? Is it a part of a tree or is it shit? It's a pile of shit. Oh, it is a pile of shit. To be fair, it doesn't actually feel that wide to drive. If you drove this in anger, then I do feel like this would be quite twitchy because it's got such a short wheelbase and it's quite wide. I can't wait to see how terrible it is. <laughs> no, I think that was clutch that time. That was a better it, 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 start it, it though. Was a better start. It wasn't a squirrely. <laughs> but it really doesn't like it, does it? It's not fast though, is it? No. No. Of course it's not fast. Right, slow down, slow down. Oh! Ooh, it, 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 won it, it wanders pulls. a bit, doesn't it? It does. There's a bit, quite a lot of corrections going on there. I think maximum torque is at 4,000, or three, between three and a half and four. It's quite high up for a diesel. Yeah. yeah. Just an engine that likes to be worked hard. Well, well that's quite Italian. It's like they tried to put the spirit of an Italian petrol engine into a yeah, diesel. It doesn't yeah, quite in a work. way. Which is odd given it's an Isuzu power plant, but. I think they quite heavily reworked it. That's why it's nowhere near as reliable. Mm. Do you want to try and launch it off that big pile of stones? Mm, no. What's the visibility like, Harry? Amazing. It's like I'm driving in a, an IMAX cinema. I think this would be much nicer as a petrol. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think the thing is, if, in terms of having enough space between each of us, mm. the spacing in here is fine. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to drive this car for a long time. No. So I think it'd be better suited for getting a large amount of people around a short to medium distance. So I, I would say the petrol one would be better. Shout. The only question I have in that respect is what were Fiat's petrol engines like at the time? 
Because uh, I have a feeling that they'd be a bit gutless in something like this. I reckon we should buy one of these and swap a V8 into it. <laughs> <laughs> what point did Fiat stop using the fire engine? Oh, I don't know. When it burned out? Ha ha ha. Oh, I'm bored now. I need to pull over and let Rob drive. Expect antics. Yes, because Mr. Hypocrite is behind the wheel. So, Rob, first impressions. <laughs> I've driven it five They're feet. coming fast. They are, yes. Very fast. Oh my God. That's <laughs> going to have come in her car. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. I think this car would be a million times better if the steering wheel was in the middle. <laughs> Centre seat, well, then it would be a T50. Yeah, basically. Like the T50 would have been based on this. This, yeah, this feels not brilliant. The gearbox is actually... It's awful, awful. It? Yeah, it's, it's actually bad. I think the gearbox in this might genuinely be, but be worse than the one I drove in that Defender. The one in the Defender wasn't bad. Mm. Mm. You're just a wuss. What do you think of the torque, Rob? Not much. <sighs> I'm just concentrating on getting into the correct gear. The steering's not terrible. It's, it's too light. Yeah, there's no feel at all. There's no real connection between the inputs that I'm putting in mm. and what the, the car is. The steering's incredibly light, but both the clutch and the, the brake clutch is very heavy. are very heavy. Yeah. And then the throttle's kind of middle, middling. Yeah. My foot's to the floor, by the way. Yeah, but you're in third. Yeah, right? I know. From, oh. Like, no RPM. But the, my, no yeah, other, used, no other car. used to driving a GR, yeah. No other car does that. <laughs> Yes, it does. Yes, it's any it's diesel. Ev every... Uh, well, then that's why I don't buy diesel cars. I refuse to own Change one. it a second. No, why would I do that? You were given a gearbox for a reason. Yes, and it doesn't work. <laughs> why are the tyres squealing at that speed? I wasn't even going that quickly. You're going faster than either of us have been around a corner. That's why the tyres are squealing. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do any of that, did I? No. I didn't do that round a single corner. I'm just being journalistic about it. it so it's steers. fine when you are in the in the driver's it seat. It understeers is what we've established. That's I fine. didn't get close to finding the limit. That's that's fine. Well, I found it for you. <laughs> I'm not even trying to make it squeal. I'm going to try and do some... Oh, yeah, did, did uh, heel and toe. Oh. Not very well. No. Wait, have you seen the pedals? I you need to be f***ing Bigfoot to heel and toe in this. <laughs> <laughs> I did I did what You're I right. thought was a stand-up job, considering we know the gearbox doesn't work and the pedals are spaced in different postcodes from each other. Yeah, but when you spent the whole of Jasper's drive being a hypocrite, yeah. of course we're going to criticise you. No, I know, yeah. Right. Fiat Multipler. That is the worst gearbox I've ever used. I think that's my... My first piece of concluding. Yeah, I would agree. It's not, it's not ideal. Now, we have to say, as we always do with a used car review, that maybe it's just this car's gearbox. Maybe that's what's happened here. However, it's only done 75,000 miles, and I'm reckoning it probably left the factory quite a bit like that. Yeah, so... On to the... That's, but let's, let's be positive. Yes. There, if you need to... If you want a compact car and you want to transport six people and their things, there is nothing better than a Fiat Multipler. Because there is nothing else. There is nothing else. Right. If you want to, if you want to win, a, like oddest car or weirdest car at a car meet, or maybe buy an early one, go to Radwood, everyone will be like, "Hey, it's a Multipler. I remember them." Yeah. Then this is great for that. If you need family transport, that's going to be reliable, comfortable livable 
This isn't it. I wouldn't buy it, no, personally. No. I don't think I could recommend anyone should buy one of these, unless you already like fit multiplers. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I think we all, in a way, had a little bit of fun while driving it, but I think yeah. a lot of that is down to how odd the car is, as opposed to its driving merits. It's like the hijet all over again. It yeah. really is. We've had a fun time today. Do not buy this car. <laughs> If you um, if you've enjoyed this video, then why not give it a like by hitting the thumbs up button? Oh my god! <laughs> Are you gonna take five years to do? You this? love it when I do that, don't you? Yeah, but it's my And if favorite. you want to comment on the video and tell us what you think, you can do so by scrolling down, hitting the comment box, and then typing in a message, and then hitting send, and then it'll come to us, and then we can read it. Also. There's a big red subscribe button <laughs> you can hit if you, you aren't Where's the key? already subscribed. And Where's if you key? want to follow us in other, other ways, you can do so uh, on social media. Those are linked down in the description as well. Harry's really gone. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can do so in one of three ways. Uh, they are to buy our merch and um, you, can, you can do that. You can buy merch, or you can become a, you can become, you can become a Patreon, or uh, you can join the channel memberships. Um, so do those things if you want to support us. Thanks for watching. Um, goodbye. Cut, guys, guys. Guys? Guys? <laughs> Guys! You forgot me! Scivola, scivola Come la pioggia scivola Come un bambino rotola Sai farlo, eppure tu Prendila e stringila, è un'emozione candida. So chiudi gli occhi e immagina il sole che tramonta già, il mare d'una vela.